lick me. I'm gonna lick you. Ew, did you lick her? <laughs> yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> what? Me? what? I'm sorry. It's okay. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's okay. I brought Kurt home thinking I was helping. And today, over the weekend, he didn't. Um... <laughs> over the weekend, he didn't come home. And I've been worried all weekend. We finally got a call and uh, he claimed that he was sober. So we went and picked him up and he was acting a little weird. And um, as soon as we got him home, he went into the bathroom and started doing weird stuff. Like no, when he walked into the house, he started like pinching at his lip and scratching his face. He was like, ow, I need tweezers, ow, Ember, get me some tweezers. And he like freaked out. Yeah, well, I came up and he was right there in the bathroom with the tweezers. And I looked in and he was digging at his tongue with the tweezers, like really bizarre and scratching and pulling at his face and freaking out. And then he was screaming, don't let them come in. Like he was acting really weird, banging his head on the side of the cupboard um, or on I the side it. of the counter. Was in your room and it... Anyways, wow. when I looked out in the hall, Austin was coming in to help me. And uh, I looked out and saw the kids in the hallway and they were crying. I was crying. You were all crying. So here's the thing is um my childhood is not the best as far as um I had a brother that was an addict and mentally ill. And um the cops, I'll just put it to you this way. The cops were at my house often and I have a lot have a lot of negative um memories, PTSD moments, things like that that I deal with. And a lot of those are triggered to my brother. And so the one thing I have promised to do for my kids is not let them have those moments. And when I saw them in the hall crying. They have a memory they'll probably never forget. Because I thought it would be okay to bring them home. And I didn't check far enough into it to figure out if he was really um, high or whatever the situation was. I'm not, I'm definitely not an expert on that. And um, right now he's in my bed uh, detoxing. As soon as he's upright, um, I'll be calling the police. <laughs> and he'll be um, leaving. I left a message with his PO, but ultimately at the end of the day, I am um, very disappointed, not just in Curtis, but in myself. <clears throat> supposed to have fun. We're supposed to have, be watching the Super Bowl. I mean, it's on, but the hero that um, I see in this whole thing is Austin. He had my back when we picked him up. He could have gone and hung out with his girlfriend. In fact, he left and then he came back. Knowing that this may turn into a big scene and he didn't, I don't know if it was what the whole scenario is in his head, but I see it as he's here to back me up. Jake went to Wendover and he carpooled. So it's not something that he can just come home. So he's stuck in Wendover and uh, well, I'm pretending to uh, figure this out, but when you have an addict, their addiction, when when they have no desire to clean it up, can ruin a family. It really can. Ruined. I feel like it did a lot of damage to my family growing up, and I don't want that for these kids. Good news is, pretty sure my other kids won't touch drugs because they're watching this front and center. Yeah? How's that for a closet vlog? <laughs> Grandma likes our closet vlogs because we're real. Grandma does? I do closet vlogs and I just kind of run my mouth. But... <laughs>
I was in my room crying because I was scared. Yeah. And I was sitting right there by my dresser and Austin came in and he closed my door. And he gave me this whole talk and he was like, I sound like a freaking chick wing right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you okay if I put this on the vlog though? Yeah? You know I wanna, why I want to put it on the vlog? Other people deal with this. Other people deal with this, and it seems like a lot of the stuff on vlogs are um, are happy go lucky. You don't see any negative. You I want to see the real fruit people. This is real, you, you guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What did um, Austin say? I was sitting there by my dresser crying like this, and he came in and he closed my door. He sat down like on the on the door, and he said like he gives me this whole talk. He's like, um. Curtis is not normal. He's mentally ill. And the people like that Allie works with, her school students, mm -hmm. he was like, when you see them, that's like what Curtis is, but in a different way. And um, I was like, like, if he's dealing with scary people, like if he owes them something like in movies <laughs> where people like come and kill people and stuff, I know that's not going to happen, but. And then he like he was like here stand up and he never hugs me, he never hugs any of us, and he gave me He's this a big teenager. long hug and oh. like my face was smashed up against him, I couldn't breathe but. <laughs> you needed a brother hug. He's a good brother. He's a good brother. He was like. He was like, Curtis doesn't want you to see him like this, and we don't want you to see him like this, but. It's good for your part because then you'll never do the same stuff that he did. I hope not. I hope not. Told you I would cry. Okay, I was, <laughs> I'm crying too. <coughs> so, um, happy Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of... We probably ought to get you guys in counseling. Why? There's, because there's the stuff that your age... Kids you guys' ages shouldn't be dealing with this. <laughs> right? And to Especially witness Especially Darren's that, age. Yeah. He's seven. And Bridger's almost ten. Yeah. Is Bridger... We've the had kids these kids... Um, really fast. These kids have gone through a lot of stuff with Curtis. Especially in Idaho. Yep, there was, that was... Idaho, there was in Alaska. We put Curtis in and out of facilities since he was 13. North Star, AMYA, <coughs> which stands for the Alaska Military Youth Academy. So these kids have watched us try to help him. And he, every time, every he, time he gets out of where he is, it doesn't matter if it's jail, prison, a mental facility, anywhere. He just keeps using he never learns. It's because he's mentally ill. Um. Anyways, I haven't really told you the depth of Curtis, you guys, but um, addiction slash mental illness is not really a good combination, and that's what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it doesn't just affect Jake and I. It affects our whole family. Anyways, I know that some of you out there do deal with the same kind of thing. Letty. Um, your words mean a lot to me because I know you have a son doing the same thing. I know he's much older, but it's hard to, um, any age, it's hard to relate to people because, um, all these kids, Curtis's ages are, um, have gone on missions and are returning uh, LDS missions. Curtis will probably never serve one and he they complain, they complain that their kids are gone and, and how they miss them and. My heart's broken for a different reason. We complain how and he's no one understands. mentally not even himself. He's not there. Anyways, um, thank you, Letty. I really do appreciate your words every time we have a post like this. I'm sure you'll have a, a comment. And um, I think the hard part, too, is not having my mom. But one of the most awesome ladies that I have is... um. Virginia um, she's my dad's my stepdad is this confusing 
my dad's wife. After my mom passed away, he married Virginia. You guys see her comments um, if you read through our, our vlogs. She comments, she watches our vlogs. And those comments are super helpful. Anyway, <laughs> the support we get from every one of you guys is unbelievable. Um, I appreciate every one of you guys' support. I know we don't know a lot of you personally, and I'd love to give a shout out to every one of you <laughs> by name. But I know it. Uh, it I'd be sitting here a while. We have over 500 subscribers. <laughs> I don't know how, honestly, how many of those are true. But we do have regulars that know our family. And those regulars, we do appreciate and love you, by the way. Thank you for hanging out with our family and, and supporting us. This is the crappiest Super Bowl post ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the score is. I'm going to guess that the Broncos are ahead. I don't know. They are. Are they? Boom. <laughs> I didn't really care. I just like the I commercials think. and halftime and the excuse to have a party. This is not my idea funny. of a party. Anyways. It's a crying party. Woo woo. Crying party. <laughs> Raise the roof. <laughs> Raise your tears. Just kidding. Raise your tears. What was your favorite what was your favorite commercial out of um out of the Super Bowl? 50th anniversary Super Bowl. What was your favorite commercial? <laughs> Mine was the Doritos one where the guy has Doritos and um, they're at the ultrasound, him and his wife, and um, the ultrasound is showing the baby and uh, the baby wants a Dorito and so it like Don't follows. tell the whole thing. The link will be down below. I'm going to see if I can oh, put it down it. there. No, they have to go watch it. <laughs> it's it. on, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube and we're going to find it and we'll put it in the post below, okay? <laughs> Mine was, there was a pug. I didn't get to see it. It was like thing. a pug mixed with a goat mixed with a baby. It was it super had, funny. It had baby legs, <sighs> a goat body, and a pug It was super face. funny. I woke, I took a nap. I was taking a nap, and I heard it, and I woke up. It was bizarre. So I have to go back and watch that one. <laughs> it was the first, um, the first commercial. No, it wasn't the first one. Yes, it was. Anyways, I will have to go take a look, and I'll post that one too. Kind of goofy. Anyway, what was your favorite commercial? Comment down below. And uh, love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Subscribe.